Hi, I'm Keith McCullough. Welcome back. Today I'm here with our all-star energy analyst, Kevin Kaiser. We introduced a best idea on the short side today. In other words, Kevin does not like it. It's BP Royalty Trust, the ticker's BPT. So Kevin, the first thing I want to do is just like, give you a chance to explain what this thing actually is. Right, so BP Prudhoe Bay Royalty Trust, BPT, it's the largest US oil royalty trust uh, in the US, $1.6 billion in market cap. Big company, really. It, it is. Yeah. Um, and so what a unit holder of BPT is entitled to is a distribution um, on the royalty stream of production, and that's going to be a function of the production decline, the oil price, and a cost schedule. Hmm. Now, if we look at this first image that we've put up here, this is the production decline of BP's interest in Prudhoe Bay over time. Um, in 2013, it was down 4% year over year. We estimate that production will be down 2% annually going forward. So, on, so basically the thing just declines, you get paid a dividend, that's what this thing is. Right, so it's a function of the production and that is in decline, it is in terminal decline. Yep. And now another key, uh, a, a key factor in determining the distributions is the cost schedule. Mm. And the costs automatically increase. We've got an image here, image two. Um, the cost schedule automatically increases and that's what really kills this trust, wow. especially in 2018. That's so huge. That will negatively impact distributions. Now, now, how does that work relative to the physical commodity price? Um, so the trust gets WTI NYMEX crude. It does not get Alaska North Slope crude. It only gets WTI. And with the WTI curve steeply in backwardation here, in other words, the out years are out at $75, yeah. um, one can hedge out that risk and there's a real negative carry trade here. Yeah. So if, if, if only you were making, you know, Kevin says a negative carry trade, uh, can you explain that just like in, in simple terms? What does that mean? How obvious is that? Right, so a negative carry trade is that the cost of holding the security is more than the yield that you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So for a retail investor, the sooner you can sell BPT, you're saving yourself money, and that's really the point. <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing. It, for me, when Kevin first introduced this idea, I said, well, this is pretty straightforward. And then I asked him, this is actually a pretty funny part of the, uh, of the, of the research process, which is, you know, so what does the management team say? <laughs> yeah, uh, th again, there's no management team, so it's just a trust. Um, the, the details of the trust are laid out in a trust conveyance, so there's no management team, which is kind of nice not so, to deal with that. Isn't that wonderful? You know, they got cost creep, it's a negative carry trade, and they actually don't have a management team. Right. Um, so that makes it for a pretty straightforward short case. Now, what would the bull say, and, and what, what keeps them in something like this? Right. So the mistake that investors are making here is they're valuing this on a near-term distribution yield. Mm. They're saying, we look at 2014, and this is going to distribute about $9 per unit, and it yields 12, 13%, we think that's a good deal. Mm -hmm. That is so wrong, right? Because what these investors don't understand is that this distribution declines over time. Every single year, this distribution will be lower and lower. And by our estimates in 2024, the distribution will be zero. Wow. I mean, that's, that's actually, you, just, you show on this next image, the right. distribution. So, yeah, that, this is our base case distribution estimate going forward. And so this is how we value the trust. Um, and as you can see, if you're valuing it off a near, near year distribution, uh, you're overvaluing That's all. I mean, no wonder why, why they don't have a management team. I wouldn't want to manage that either. The, the, this is a big issue, but you know, this, this, there's a bigger, uh, I guess, a more endemic issue to investing, that people start with that sticker, right. that yield, and then they start to invest from there. Is that why, th when I look at the institutional uh, hol you know, holdings on this thing, there's not really anyone real who owns it. There's a lot of wealth managers. Is, yeah, that, is that why? A royalty trust, I think, is like the ultimate yield chasing vehicle. Um, it's similar to an MLP in a way, but you know, different in that this is actually you know really a declining asset with no terminal value. Um, but no, absolutely, um, you know, valuing something off a of yield off of what it distributes, it, that is not a profit. A distribution is not a profit. Um, so if you're valuing, uh, you know, an equity security off what the company distributes, you're likely to make a mistake and overpay. Distribution is not a profit. That's a good lesson. Now, and I guess overall, I mean, some people that follow you closely are going to say, you know, you made these great calls on, on some of the MLPs. Uh, this is, is not the same thesis. It's not the same subsector, but it does have that piece, that yeah. yield chasing piece. No, absolutely. I, I think, you know, whether it's a real estate investment trust, mm. a royalty trust, an MLP, I think sort of all of these, uh, any sort of security that's really held up by its yield is likely to be over, overvalued and the risks underappreciated in this situation. So um, while it's not exactly the same, certainly uh, similar characteristics. Yeah, and this is typically what you look for. You look for the math and the math just doesn't add up. Right. So in that case, yeah, I think that's a good way to wrap it up. I mean,
again, know your numbers. Don't look for just like the yield associated with the stock. This shouldn't be that easy, and guess what? It's not. Understand where the revenues are going, understand where those costs are going, and understand how you could or could not get paid in the future, which I think Kevin Kaiser does a better job than most on that. I'm at Keith McCullough, that's my Twitter handle. If you have any questions for me, and most specifically for Mr. Kaiser, he's at Hedgeye Energy with his very prolific Twitter platform as well. <laughs>